Hello students, you have already learnt the plant reproduction and in that the structure of flower and next stage pollination and what is the result of pollination? After pollination, fertilization takes place. What are the end structures of fertilization? Fruit and seeds, isn't it? Today's chapter we are going to learn seeds structure and germination got it it comes under the unit 3 plant physiology is it clear no what is seed then seed is a ripened ovule then what is fruit fruit is a ripened ovule you had already learned the part ovule ovary all that isn't it in parts of flat so fruit is enlarged ripened ovary the ovarian wall and the fruit wall, both you know, children, when they fuse together, we call it as grain. So, in certain fruits, the ovarian wall and the fruit wall and the seed coat, both will fuse together and become one structure. Got it? So, the fruit wall protects the seed and the ovarian wall protects the fruit. When they both fuse together, it forms into grain now we are going to learn a few examples of fruit mango pea and you all know that isn't it mango say some examples right goa all these are examples of fruit whereas seed examples bean seed peas etc isn't it now examples of grains maize wheat rice grains etc now we are moving to the seed and fertilization what will happen to the pollen grains and the male gamete isn't it female gamete ovule what will happen after fertilization after fertilization ovules will develop into seeds ovary will develop into fruit got it what is a seed then? Seed is a mature, oh, seeds are mature ovules, isn't it? And they contain tiny living plant, the embryo. The, de the developed from the fused sperm nucleus and the egg nucleus. The embryo consists of a radical, that is future root, and the plumule, that is future shoot and cotyledons are seed that is for future leaves understood so by this what you understand radical is a future root plumule is future future shoot cotyledons are future leaves the embryo remains in inactive form the inactive form of embryo is called as dormant stage but upon the exposure of various favorable conditions, they germinate. The seed germinates. The seed may also contain sometimes food storage material. The food store material are for the nourishment of the embryo, that is the baby plant during germination. So that food material can be either stored in cotyledons or it can be stored separately as endosperm so now what you understand the nourishment tissue is the endosperm and cotyledons both the places you find the food nourishment the seed can withstand unfavorable conditions of temperature drought and some seeds are known as remaining dormant even up to 100 years got it children so that is why they immediately after the seed formation we dry them we keep them in refrigerator take them out then put it in water even though they will germinate isn't it so anything which is kept in the refrigerator can you think it can they grow they cannot grow isn't it they are dead but in the case of seeds even after keeping them in the refrigerator Take them up, out, put them again into the water. Again, the germination starts. That shows 
the seed remains dormant in unfavorable conditions so it can withstand did you understand now classification of seeds and types of seeds based on the structure and based on the endosperm we have various kinds of seeds seeds vary in size also we they are very small some are so small that are barely visible to the naked eye they are poppy seeds strawberry seeds etc some are quite large that is they are visible to the naked eye mango plum etc some are very large coconut double coconut etc got it based on the endosperm there are two kinds of seeds seeds can be classified into albuminous or endospermic in such seeds cotyledons are thin and membranous and endosperm persists endosperm remains in the double fertilization in previous lesson you have learned in fertilization lesson in double fertilization one gamete male gamete fuses with the pollen with the central cell and forms into endosperm isn't it if that persists then those seeds are called albuminous or endospermic seeds and some seeds are not having that end endosperm and cotyledons will this will cotyledons will become thick and fleshy such seeds are called exalbuminous or non endospermic seeds now we move on to the endosperm seed endospermic seeds again are two kinds monocot albuminous seeds that is here we consider the cotyledon number of cotyledons got it based on the cotyledons we have two kinds isn't it monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous in your lower classes you have already learned this so having an endosperm and monocots then we call it as monocot albuminous seeds all the cereals millets palm will come under that dicot albuminous seeds poppy custard apple etc will come under this that is having two cotyledonous two cotyledons and albumin so they are called dicot albuminous seeds and exalbuminous seeds there are again two cot uh, two kinds monocot exalbuminous seeds valisneria orchids amorphophallus are the examples and dicot albuminous seeds gram pea mango mustard dicot albuminous seeds you might have seen children in your house two cotyledons in cashew nut tau we can separate two cotyledons the uh, cotyledons they are dicot dicot albuminous seeds now based on the cotyledons they are based on two kinds of seeds broadly two kinds monocotyledonous seed containing one cotyledon maize grasses etc dicotyledonous seeds contain two cotyledons example pea gram bean etc so bean is a dicotyledonous seed now we are going to learn structure of bean structure of bean seed so the bean seed has the following structures there are number of different kinds of bean seed such as broad bean lima bean french bean etc but the general structure of their seeds is the same most are the mark kidney shaped with the convex at one end and another end concave side what it like a kidney gel convex and concave surfaces seed it has two bean seed has two coverings namely testa and tegmen together we call them as seed coat seed coat consists of testa the outermost hard brownish covering it is it protects the delicate inner parts of the seed from injury and from the attack of bacteria fungi and insects and tegmen it is a very thin layer lying next to the testa and also protective in nature this is also protective in nature 
In jackfruit, we can clearly see two things separately, children. That is the testa, thick plastic like, and the inner pink color tegmen. Now we are moving to the next part of this bean seed, hilum. Hilum is a distinct whitish oval scar on the concave side of the seed. It represents the spot where the ovule was attached to the ovary one through placenta. Got it? You have learned that this tissue to which the ovule is attached is called placenta, isn't it? That spot is represented as a white color spot. Most of the seeds, particularly in Rajma and, and Lima bean, French bean and all, you will find one dot, one line, white color line. That line is called hyla. It's a distinct whitish scar. And below that, there is one small pore, a tiny pore called micropyle. Micropyle is situated close to the hilum. It marks the opening through which the pollen tube had entered the ovule. Micropyle has two important functions. When soaked in water, the seeds absorb water mainly through this micropyle and make it available to the embryo for germination. It provides for the diffusion of respiratory gases for the growth of embryo. That means the required water and also the respiratory gases both enter through micropyle to the seeds. Got it children? Now below the micropyle we find cotyledons. Got it? Below the seed coat are two thick cotyledons and their functions are they contain nourishing food for the embryo and they protect the embryo. Now embryo. When you carefully observe our children separating two cotyledons, you will find a tiny embryo which can be easily attached to the one cotyledon. Not to the junction or on the two cotyledons. One cotyledon, the embryo will be attached. Usually peanuts, when you take the fried peanuts separately, you separate cotyledons, on top of it you will find a small tiny embryo. The embryo consists of two parts. The radical, which later forms the root. And the plumule, which later forms shoot. The plumule consists of short stem with a pair of tiny leaves and growing point between them. Got it? Children, whenever you spell radical, spell don't spell it as radical. It is radical. Radical, you will find R-A-D-I-C-A-L. You find in your chemistry. Is understood? The region of the axis between the point of attachment of cotyledon and plumule is called epicotyl. The region of the axis below the cotyledon is called hypocotyl. So here you are learning two words, the two words, epi and hypo. Epi means epicotyl and hypocotyl. Got it? The region below the cotyledons is called hypocotyl. The region above the cotyledon is called epicotyl. So epi means above, hypo means below. Is that clear? Now we are going to learn the structure of maize grain. Maize grain is an example of monocot. So you have thoroughly learned now structure of dicot seed. And now we are moving to structure of monocot seed. The maize grain is actually a single seeded fruit in which the fruit wall and the seed coat are fused together to form a protective layer. Just in the beginning of the lesson we have learnt that the seed coat and the fruit wall fuses and form into a single structure then we call it as grain. So maize is a grain. Got it? Therefore we call such fruits as grain. Got it? On one side of the grain occurs a small light colored oval, oval area which marks the location of the embryo site. 
got it the embryo side that is a we can distinguish distinguish we can separate we can know what scar will be there the remaining major parts of the grain contains large endosperm which is rich in starch that means you now understood maize is a albuminous seed or endospermic seed it has a large endosperm the endosperm and the embryonic part are separated from each other by a thin epithelial layer this time when you eat baby corn or corn american corn snow children take one seed take it carefully observe all this part the one you relish the sweetness that is embryo sorry sorry endosperm and the thin small structure which comes out is embryo you got it so the endosperm and embryonic part are separated from each other by a thin epithelial layer the outermost layer of the endosperm is rich in protein and it and it is called the aileron layer the embryo consists of single cotyledon here the scutellum the radical and the plumule also present the radical is towards the pointed end and it is enclosed with a protective sheath called coleoriza the plumule is towards the upper broader side of the embryonic region and is enclosed by a protective sheath called coleoptile got it the maize grain is monocotyledonous and endospermic some other examples also we have for the endospermic seeds they are rice wheats and oat now we are going for differences between monocot seeds and the dicot seed if you take monocot seed we have learned maize if you take dicot seed we have learned bean so now bean has two cotyledons maize has one cotyledon and it is called as scutellum bean does not contain any endosperm maize has large endosperm bean has large embryo maize has small embryo in beans plumule leaves are folded and maize plumule leaves are rolled in maize plumule is very large and in maize plumule is very small whereas in bean plumule is large children by mistake as i told in maize plumule is large please correct it in bean plumule is large in maize plumule is very small in bean hilum and micropyle are visible in maize hilum and micropyle are not visible in bean seeds separately contain in the fruit called pod whereas in maize the seed wall and fruit wall fuse to form single grain with no separate seed so hope you all understood this lesson next